the union contracts. And we're all anxious to hear from Mr. Sullivan, our deputy or is it assistant, Tom Manager? I keep getting confused on that. Welcome, Jamie. Good evening. I assume you saw the video of the last meeting and you're going to tell us I what. I did see a snippet, yes. Yeah, okay, good. So, um, there are a couple of questions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer what you have. I was a little confused on a couple of them, but in general, um, what's up on the website, what's been presented to the board, and what I believe this committee has also f received is a copy of the tentative agreement, which lays out the changes to the union contract. Mr. Mar, one of the questions I believe you asked was um, with regard to the costing sheet. It talks about, or the article talks about, um, over the cost of. To, to be clear, the costing items you see in that Warren article are the new costs associated with the negotiated changes to the current contracts. So everything that's in the contract, consider that what our costs are, what you have in your wages, you have and everything else in the budget that you've reviewed. These changes, if adopted by the, the town, if they're approved, will result in these additional costs above those that are currently existing. Is that is, clear for you? Does that also include pensions and stuff uh, of that nature, sir? So yes, in, in the costing sheet that was attached, it breaks down into the categories where the changes are and it gives you what those numbers are. Um, that section you're talking about would be in the benefits. That might be changes to um, retirement costs, tax costs, that type of thing, anything related to the benefits attached to the wages. And how many uh, officers are... It's David, hold on. Are you, are you done, Jamie? No, I'm just trying to answer the questions. Uh, you know, however you keep, wish to proceed with them. I, mean, I can just answer your questions. You saw the video, you saw our concerns. Yeah. Speak to them. Sure. So within the patrol contract, there uh, are two this, groups. Is this David? David. It's police David. sergeants. You don't have the floor. Jamie has the floor. Let the man speak. He asked me a question. I thought I was answering it. No, I thought you just asked how many were in the units. Yeah. Yeah, so in the patrol unit... There are 25 patrol, full-time patrol officers, and currently, and this is a, a moving target all the time, 33 part-time officers. That target moves throughout the year. Um, with the sergeants, there are six in that bargaining unit. Keep going, Jim. So that was, I believe, the extent of the questions I recall from Mr. Mara. Uh, the other questions, I'd be happy to open up to the, to the, to the group and answer them now for you. Well, one of the questions that, that I believe I raised was relative to the change in the prescription plan. Yeah. Uh, you said it was going to save us money, and there was a cost item in their transition, as I recall. Right. right. So what occurred is several years ago, Health Trust, who was our provider for health insurance, they made a change to uh, the health insurance prescription plan. So you have health insurance, your medical, and then you have attached to those a prescription plan they changed one of those prescription plans which is contained throughout numerous contracts in CBAs. As a negotiated item, we are at risk if that benefit changes to, hey, you don't cover my prescription like you used to, we potentially could be at risk for that. So what happened in this, this case is we, the communities, communicated with Health Trust saying, hey, look, you've got to give us an opportunity to, to deal with these at the negotiating table. You can't just unilaterally put them in, and they did that. So over the years, we've changed that issue in each of the contracts. The last one left on this is the police contract. They've been grandfathered. We must make that change in order to uh, uh, resolve that. So the prescription plan is the change that took place here. What we're doing is they're moving from what was a more expensive prescription plan that they eliminated with some mail-in and other issues uh, to a new plan that's offered. Um, part of that, you will see a reduction of both the town's cost and the individual cost. But again, in the negotiating process, what we did with the multiple units in order to incent to get off of this so we don't deal with this issue is added uh, a prescription, sort of a transition period, and $8,000 in this case, it was for each of the units similarly, so that if there's an out-of-pocket difference for that transition period until they're used to doing it, this will carry on forever, and those savings we anticipate will continue on, uh, but that transition period is why that pool was there. Uh, to cover costs if they can prove the differentials uh, during that period of time. So the $8,000 transition costs? So, so what you've got is we're going to change prescription plans, yeah. and the resulting changes to those costs will occur. Then there is a $8,000 pool that gets put aside, and for prescriptions that were previously covered for a period of time, they can come forward with proof and say, hey, I would have had this covered. We, we will pay them out of that pool if they have that that proof 
and move forward from there. Once the contract's over or that pool is expended, that's gone. That's sort of a, a during this period of time is when that exists, and then that's gone in the future. So when the eight thousand dollars disappears, we're done. That's it for that well, transition is, period. What is this? A three-year contract. This is a three-year contract. So and after three years, it's done, even if there's still money there. Is what you're saying, right? Correct. If there's money left over, that turns back to the does, town. Does this eight thousand dollar transition cost? It's the same issue with both contracts, right? Yes. Okay. Is that eight thousand for both contracts? Yes. Or one? Okay. With both units. Okay. Good. Um, I noticed we have a, also have a warrant article relative to increasing. Uh, the revenue we're charging for uh, special details, and I know the selectmen are, have already believed approved increasing the rate of pay. So uh, yes, and it's, is, is that reflected in the contract that increased? No, I think pay? that was a little confusing. I think, and those are those are separate issues. So what we have is the questions were raised about what the detail <coughs> pay was. In this, the detail pay is adjusted. It was $35 or the officer's overtime rate in the pre previous contract. That's been moved up to $40 or the overtime rate. Um, that issue you're talking about in the separate warrant article has to deal with the administrative fees that are charged to those details to offset our costs. Um, it yeah, was. I, I guess my nature of my question was the increased pay uh, for details. Is a function not of this contract, but rather of the Board of Selectmen's vote on the matter. Is that true or no. not? It's uh, in the contract or not? Detail pay is in the contract. Okay. So that increase is actually in the contract. Which increase? Sir? The increased pay to the police officer on private the change detail. from 35 to 40. That's in the contract. Is in this proposed contract, yes. Correct. And it's not reflected in its cost estimate because it's not a cost. It's coming out of the fund. It's not coming out of the budget. Is that fair? Correct, and that okay. actually creates a profit is why it's not a cost item because of that amount of money that we put on the extra. And again, I want to be clear on that other warrant article. That only deals with the board uh, voted and has authority to change fees, how much you pay for a copy, yeah. how much you pay, whatever. So they voted to change because the chief, chief of police came in and, and said, hey, look, our current charge of 30 isn't covering our costs. We need to do something about this. So they voted to do that. The manager found in, <coughs> as you recall, the entertainment ordinance, the, the numbers in the, the article you're talking about to change to 50% comes from that warrant article that mm -hmm. changed the entertainment. That had a specific language of 30% in it, so that was voted by the town that has to be changed by the town meeting. All the other ones are done by the fee schedule, and this warrant article is just, dif just dealing with that deficiency. That's what that's related to. Mm -hmm. I think you had made a, a question or posed a question, as I recall, a snippet, something to the effect of, if this fails, that'll affect the other. They're unrelated. If the change from 30 to 50 does not get approved by the town meeting, um, that means we just continue to charge the 30% instead of the 50 if somebody works in entertainment detail. They're relatively infrequent. Yeah, but it also means the fund would, would be uh, decreasing uh, at a greater speed if it's not bringing in that additional revenue that the warrant article uh, calls for, right? And again, to be clear, details related to that entertainment ordinance are fairly infrequent. So it would have to be related to that ordinance, one. And then two, yes, it would be charged at 30 instead of 50, and as we propose, that wouldn't cover the total cost of it. So we highly recommend we do that. That does two things. It changes that and gives the authority back to the board to set those fees with everything. So okay, that's, that's separate from the contracts. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Uh, should we want to deal with both contracts collectively? Everyone okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I just have one Mr. question. Mr. Frank. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, what is the actual percentage of increase for both the uh, patrolman and the sergeant's contract? So the, the contracts are three years, they're 2.8, 2.8, 2.8. Now, again, I'll point out that for pat the starting patrolman, is that? Yeah, that's your question. The question. Okay. It's a 2.8% yes. increase. They're just being totally. Transparent. There's also a change no, in wage for those two positions. Know. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions on the contract, Mr. Warburg? Um, Mr. Sullivan, what is the current ratio of insurance, health insurance that officers are paying, and what would the future be? Is it 85-15? Is it 80-20? Uh, yeah. It, it varies based on the plan that they're on, Mr. Warburton. So it varies. I think it's it's the highest is. 15% to 20%, depending on the plan they're choosing. That is, 
their the employees portion of the cost the vast majority I think are at 15 percent is it safe to say that the senior patrolmen and, and or sergeants would be in the re receiving end of the 8515 and the newer ones would be lower than that I don't know I, no. I, it, again it's it was related to those changes of as they progressed down had to do with which of the plans you chose really based on cost of that plan and do the prescription changes have anything to do with new new employees they're not a phased in issue no sir it's an across the board change from health trust All right. and to Frank's point and I think Jamie's not an answer but the 2.8 2.8 2.8 which I found interesting in itself um, especially where other contracts in town the recent years have been lead, you know leading up to that but anyway that's what was I'm negotiated. sorry I don't understand that well it's I don't like schools for instance went they went like zero one and then two I, I haven't seen this this high increase for uh, contractuals in other the same with the firefighters I, I don't believe yeah, their last contract was three 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 DPW was three 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 but Teams they went out they went without several years though right uh, they went one year different mm. so this contract was three years as you call the big global all the unions went a period of approximately six years without anything Six, and yeah. then there were a couple of one-year things that each unit did a little bit differently. Yeah. And then starting about three years ago, the town um, um, approved the police contract in that first year, rejected the fire ones, and then the next year came back and approved those. So right now, the police are at the end of a three-year deal, which was a 333. As you recall, back when you were on the board, that was pretty much the constant number forever, 33333. They always were at that number. Um, as, as the six-year period of that difficult financial time went, there were zeros for everybody. And then they slowly moved forward with some of them did a 1-7, some did a 1-something. There were some different reasons for different units to do that. But the police contract was the first one kind of going back more to, to that period of time. The current contracts that are out there that are approved by the voters were fire for 333, the officers last year for 333, uh, DPW for 333 three, three, and the Teamsters for uh, I think it's 275 or 28 I think it was 275 for them right because they had gone two years without the, the point I'm making is this and you're right in what you just alluded to years ago we saved tons of money in negotiating because we did all six bargaining units at the same time which the voters in their mind the reason we have these up and down years they're constantly looking at oh they're coming back again this year with another contract so the, the hypothetical question for you, you know, in the future, are we going to ever get back to negotiating so we keep those costs down and all that, all six at one time? Yeah, so I would answer it this way. All those contracts many years back were, well, not always, but there was a long period where outside counsel came in and negotiated all of those contracts. Those no longer get paid, all that savings, because we do it in-house. To answer your question, yeah, that's the way it was. Are we ever going to get back to that? That's a good question. Um, for example, uh, the two fire units, you'll see the fire officers last year opted to do two years to get back in cycle with the firefighters. Um, yeah. As far as whether the other units, Mr. Warburton, choose to change cycle, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. And, and it's it, something for the table. The only other comment, and I have one more question, I just want to clarify for the public. It wasn't outside counsel we used. We used actual labor contracts. Rennie Perry was not a lawyer. The point I'm saying is the public, and we're going to be talking more about this at the town meeting, needs to hear, and I used to bring this up with the whole legal counsel we had in town. You heard me speak at the town meeting seven years ago. How much are we saving with negotiating costs? Because that is important. Sure. This 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, because you don't deal with that in the schools because they always come back with three-year contracts. It's a little misleading because the higher guys are going to go off the roof. The lower guys are, you know, they're not going to catch up right away. But I, I think it's important to note, though, that I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to understand your question. Yeah. Sorry. Well, the, the higher, higher guys, guys make out better on this. Well, because they're a higher wage. Well, I understand. Percentage wise, okay. just like the private details that you were talking about. I mean, the higher guys. So, it, I mean, it's important to note. So, I would hope that as we go to the deliberative session, that there's maybe more dialogue on. I, I like to hear the savings. We've heard a lot about savings. And I certainly have been supportive of contracts, and my record is proven. The only other question I'm going to ask, and we asked this when we negotiated years ago, and you, you were a policeman then when we negotiated, what, did, what was given up 
in return for this? What, what was given up in the negotiations that we can say to the public that why they deserve this? Yeah, I, I, I guess that's an, an old way of thinking. So here's what I would say. Negotiations are a give and take at all times, Brian. And when you're at the table, things ebb and flow. When we okay. began our negotiations, there were multiple things that both sides were interested in. And as you go through a negotiating process, some things make it through, some get amended, some get dropped completely. Um, but the idea that, hey, if we're going to give you anything, you're going you're gonna to get nothing, I, fr I, frankly, I think that's an old, outmoded way of thinking. Um, it is what is best for the taxpayers. We go in there as our charge from the Board of Selectmen. What are your goals and objectives? We as the negotiating committee go in there to achieve those goals and objectives. Um, that's how negotiation works. The unions are represented by a group that do the same thing. Sometimes we're able to do that amicably, sometimes it's not. Um, to your point of the savings, we can have legal do some estimates. I know we've put them out before, uh, but the amount of money that's saved not using outside negotiators, you're right, Mr. Perry for years was one of them. Um, the other gentleman happened to be a lawyer. But there were a substantial amount of money that was paid for that. And that was the process at the time. <laughs> now we do it in-house. And, you know, there's pluses and minuses to both, however you see that. The, the only comment I'm going to make, and I, I'm not going to get into the discussion, there, it is not the old way of thinking. Years ago when it was 100%. That was my opinion, sir. Well, okay, that's fine. 100% insurance, you remember those days where you guys didn't pay a cent, but then when you went down to 85, 85 to 15 or even 90, 10, said if you give us a higher wage per hour, and that happened in the 90s, people were willing to negotiate. That is a way of thinking. Yeah, no, I agree and, with that. And that's, it's not old. It's, it's still happening today. We see negotiation. So all I'm saying is we are in a position, this is part and parcel of a whole slew of things we're asking the, the taxpayers. And I want to be an opponent <laughs> for you. Yeah, I agree completely. And that's all I'm saying. So at the delivery session, I, I, I'd like to see more estimates. And I understand, by the way, a good explanation. I understand how the weeks work and April 1st and all that. And I, I think we all, but just want to make it clear that, you know, it just seems to me, especially in the last 10 years, it just seems like we're negotiating all the time. So that's, a, that's an off thing. But I appreciate yeah, being, it. Being a member of that committee, I would tend to agree with you. I'd love to have three years off cycle. That would be great. Yeah. But Well, I appreciate we your answers. Uh, I have no more. Anybody else on the union contracts, either one? Uh, we want to vote on both of them collectively. Is that correct? Okay. You need a motion? No. All those in favor of recommending uh, both union contracts, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Thank That's you. And you're all set on the second Warren That's article both, as well? Both contracts are unanimous. I'm, I'm sorry, the, the other Warren article regarding the... That's both union contracts are unanimous. Sorry. Be, be Understood. Yeah. I'm talking about the third one we discussed here. Do you want to approach that now or do you want to come back to that? <coughs> the issue with the change on the fee, the 30 to 50. Oh, you said they were unrelated, so let's keep them that way. It's completely, you brought it up, not me. <laughs> and you corrected me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I stand corrected. <laughs> 